With us is Kurt Barling, who's a former special correspondent for BBC London, who did an investigation into the Lackanagh House flat fire in Camberwell in July 2009. Six people died in that fire. Well, Kurt is now a professor of journalism at Middlesex University in London. Kurt, thank you very much for coming in. Just remind us, for people who aren't familiar with that, that case of the Lackanagh House. Uh, 2009, a fire killed six people. When that fire happened, firefighters came out of that building very much like they did in the last couple of days, saying, we have never seen anything like this before in our lives. But it was in no way as catastrophic a failure as we've seen uh, from those dramatic pictures from Grenfell. So Lackanall House, in the end, was a fire which raised an awful lot of questions about safety of those type of high-rise flats for their residents. Now, the coroner in that particular case made a lot of recommendations. What were the central ones? Well, look, it took four years to get to a, an inquest, a long, long time. We can't wait that long for a public inquiry. In essence, uh, the coroner said, we need to look at the advice that you give to residents, whether they stay put or whether they get out. You need to look at the firefighting capability of the firefighters to get into a premise in order to get rid of the fire and rescue people. They talked about uh, the fire risk assessments, which are done on every single tower block around the country. It's a legal requirement. Are they fit for purpose? And what more needs to be done to make them fit for purpose? The question of the retrofitting of sprinklers, is that possible? Is it affordable? Well, the coroner said we need to look very closely at that. And finally, and most importantly, about the building regulations. Because in the end, a building is only as safe as the materials that it's constructed from. And the big concern in Lackanor was that this building, which had been built in the 60s, had been modified. And in modifying that building, it had been made less safe. And that's the key question. And it's a key question from were the modifications made to that property uh, were resulting in the inferno that we saw? Was that building made less safe than it was before the refurbishments? What happened with those recommendations from well, the coroner? Well, you know, the coroner has a responsibility in an inquest like that. It was almost a proxy for a public inquiry at the time into the six deaths. A wide-ranging, 11-week-long inquest which looks at a mountain of evidence. And the coroner, under Section 43 of the Coroner's Act, is allowed to say... Uh, what might prevent deaths happening in the future. And those recommendations essentially said, look, you have to take on board uh, some of these, uh, these issues. You, she wrote directly to the minister, Eric Pickles, and said to the minister, you must consider this as a matter of urgency. Interestingly enough, Eric Pickles wrote back to her, the, the minister at the time, saying, we take all these matters very seriously and I can tell you we make fire safety the highest priority. That's in black and white. The public inquiry will want to look at that correspondence among many other things and say well if there was such a priority why was it that when this particular building in West London was refurbished it had measures in place which perhaps compromised the fire safety and why do we say that? because we see an empty shell, 24-storey building, which is completely wiped out as a result of fire. When a flat is supposed to be self-contained, isn't you know, it? Back in the fire? 1960s and 1950s, they knew that. When they built those blocks, they made sure that the key ingredient in keeping people safe was that the flat would hold fire, any one flat would hold fire for 60 minutes. 60 minutes gave firefighters time to get in, it gave the residents time to get out, and life would be saved. And the reality is, if these recommendations had been taken up. It's very likely, of course, that lives could have been saved because people would have got out and the fire wouldn't have spread so rapidly. That's a key question. Why did it spread so rapidly? A lot of the issues that you've raised, and probably many more, will no doubt be looked at in this public inquiry into the Grenfell um, fire. What stopped a meaningful change, though? Well, that's a really good question, isn't it? Because the change was put on the table by the consequences of the fire, the dramatic nature of the Lackanall fire. The change was uh, recommended, recommended by the coroner. The coroner was heard by the minister. The minister said that his uh, of officials and uh, were going to be in contact with social uh, landlords and, in other words, cascading the advice down. But clearly... This building was refurbished only uh, 18 months ago. Lots of advice 
clearly wasn't heeded, even though they say they work within the rules, perhaps it's the rules and regulations which are wrong. And frankly, having seen that fire, having worked as a journalist on that fire over five years, having seen the trauma that families went through, you have to say, so soon after, for another fire to happen like that, it is nothing short of a national scandal, and not before time that we get this public inquiry. So then, thinking back to Lacanal, he must have brought back all of those, those thoughts for you. What was going through your mind when you were watching these pictures of this? When I arrived down there yesterday and I saw that time, my heart sank. I just thought, how is it possible in 2017, after we'd been through that whole Lacanal House quest to find out what went wrong, and people asked sensible questions, they got robust and reasoned argument and answers based on evidence, not on hearsay, on evidence, mountains of evidence, and recommendations put to the minister, and the minister heard, the minister acted, he said, to get people to work, but it obviously didn't happen on the ground. I mean, in the end, this is time for the chat to stop and for action to start. Kurt Barling, former special correspondent for BBC London, now Professor of Journalism, thank you very much.